Mr. Jones. Sebastian Key, what's happening? I'm chilling, man. How's uh, lockdown been for you for the past few weeks since our last chat? I mean, like, have you ever been to Thorpe Park? Yeah. Yeah, but you know, like, the roller coaster does, like, 10 loops. It's basically lockdown, something like that. Up and down, yeah. Ups and downs, man. <laughs> Ups and downs. Wow. <laughs> How's yours been? It's not been too bad because, like, my routine hasn't changed that much. I've been coming into work. Um, my fitness hasn't been the best it's ever been but i've started road biking <laughs> <laughs> dude I, I did my first ever long road bike ride i'm actually proud of you how far did you go 25 miles baby oh big man thing it was good i think it's like i was thinking it's such a nice way to see the countryside as well i'm a big fan of like the countryside and trees and it was just like I don't know, on a BMX, you, when, we, when we go ride, st- street riding in cities and stuff, you see so much of the city that no one else sees. Yeah. So we're riding around looking for a weird little ledge. That's <laughs> like scanning the city, looking for tiny little rails and stuff. And then, yeah, road biking was just nice. Mate, it's like, sick. Like when I go out near me, because um, I live right in the forest in the countryside, like, I can go left out of my house and go like rolling hills and sheep. Or I can go right straight into the forest, like through massive pine trees. It's sick. I love it. Yeah, it's really hilly around my, mine though, so it's so up and down. I mean, I've got hills too. I live, I live on the coast too, just further down the road. Yeah, but when I, whenever I've gone there, it's dead flat. Shut up, mate. It, it is. You haven't been cycling near me. I've been, I've driven around near you enough. This is Tour de France training, mate. I've been in a car with you while you've been, while you were drunk, <laughs> <laughs> and you nearly crashed on a roundabout near Marks and Spencers. Shout out to my C class. That car was sick. <laughs> Do you get, remember that time, get man? Get the back end out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember driving through town, um, trying to nail that pigeon? You probably shouldn't say that, Ollie. I mean, dodging the pigeon. Oh, yeah. And we were like, Ollie, you're trying to kill that pigeon. And you were like trying to defend yourself, saying that it was fine. And we were like, are you okay, Ollie? <laughs> was that the when you, when you had Adderall as well? Yeah, that, that was some good years of my life. <laughs> Me and Tom turned up at yours, and you were like high on Adderall. <laughs> you were like, oh, so you were like, yes, yeah, sick. And we were like, are you okay? <laughs> I was focused on Adderall. <laughs> You're cooked. You're cooked. Um. So yeah, no, I got back from my 25 mile bike ride though. I, I, also, I did it on that old road bike, so the gears are down on the bottom tube. So that Safe. I, re- yeah, I was going 50 miles an hour down a hill, round a corner, no helmet on, looking down at the chain to see which gear I was in. It was like, the chain was like coming off and I was like, one hand on the bike trying to change gear. I was like, I've got to sort this out. You like, are loose. I just need to get a better road bike. You know, I yeah. need to accept the fact that I need to spend need some a, money. You need a full carbon, aeroed out bad boy, drop 3K, speed eight. You said that you're... The gears on yours are powered by electric, right? Yeah, I've got I've got um Altogo Di2, so it's like all electric Bluetooth. So you there's like it's a uh, one cable goes from into the bars and goes underneath the stem, and then it Bluetooth to the derailleur and everything. You just you've got an app for your phone. You can like change settings and stuff. Mine is purely analog. <laughs> you are high eight. Mine's like 1965's best road bike. You are props issue 38 44 yeah. teeth chainring. Played yeah. shirt baggy jeans but i tell you what i got back from that 25 mile bike ride i was pretty tired i'm not gonna lie i was like it was it was a hot day um and i didn't i don't know Stu, well, i went with Stu, and he didn't sort of i didn't expect to go that far so yeah. when i got back i was pretty tired and the first thing i thought was wait 25 miles and i was like a marathon is what 26 is this when you text me i was texting you and i was like i'm never <laughs> gonna run a marathon ever like I was tired, I was tired from rolling down hills on a twenty-six five-mile bike ride, let alone running. Yeah, I think, but I think it's different when you when you actually train for something. Like, like that becomes like like okay. Like you'll do, you do, you would like you won't even go out and be like, oh, that's fine. Like, okay, I just need, I need to do that. It's fine. True. Like, true. Because I'll go out on my road bike and I'll I'll like I'll treat twenty miles as like a speed test, and I'll treat like forty as like a decent ride or something. Yeah, I, I, like, but then I said to you, I would do a marathon if it was totally flat. I couldn't do a hilly marathon or try it. This, try this is why we should do do Berlin, do the Berlin marathon because it's pretty flat. I'll be up for it. Okay, next year let's do it. It's 
It's not very fun going to do a marathon with you, though, because you've done crazy runs and you're a super athlete. Oh, my teacher even said athlete that actually. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's a bit of fun, man. You should like. It. I I like long endurance events. I think you know we spoke about it last time. But endurance events help quiet the mind. But I seriously though. I, I, I'm not trying to give you more props, but I I thought about you doing the 65 mile run when I got back from that ride, and I was so I was pretty tired. I was like laying on the sofa, like Alice was like asking me to make her Wilson's lunch and stuff, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> "Can you just do it?" <laughs> yeah, and I was, but I was tired, and I just thought, "Wow, Ollie ran 65 miles. You're you're insane." I I the only way you can fathom that kind of thing. Like if you're listening to this and you've never run before, I know you probably know that running's hard, but the only way you start to understand that kind of stuff, really, truly understand it, is when you start trying to either run yourself or or go on a 25 mile bike ride and realize that 25 miles is a long way. Yeah, I I, I think that now. I went out. I did. I did. I rode 60 miles on my bike today, and I got home and I was like, man, I was like, I ran this before. That's far. Like seriously it's far like the amount of time i was pedaling along like we all know that riding a bike when you're when you're going down a hill it's not exercise (laughs) you're not doing anything it's the funnest (laughs) when you're going down a hill on a bike it is obviously it's the funnest thing you ever do in your life yeah but then when people say oh yeah you know i rode rode 10 miles today it's like yeah but how much was that what did you ride yeah you were gliding (laughs) you sat on your bum (laughs) for 9.3 miles I've been like, because I live with my um my sister's boyfriend. We go out cycling together because he's a keen road cyclist. But like, we, it's completely different mindsets. Like when I go out, I'm like a BMX. It's like we get to a hill, and I'm just like fingers off the brakes. I am like, if, I don't care if there's a corner coming up. I'm just like on the top tube. Like yeah, let's go as fast as I can. And he's like, <laughs> like being all sketchy. Like oh, I don't want to go too fast. And there's a car coming. And I'm just like yeah, just like Dude, head down. That was me, one handed. <laughs> No helmet on, trying to check if my chain's still on on this 1965 rally. Your bike is so good. Oh, I need to buy a new one. Well, have a go on mine. See if you like it. I would, but you live in Bournemouth. It's just three hours for me, so I can't have a quick go. It's actually three hours and 20 minutes, 127.6 miles. Hike. Absolute hike. When people, people say to us in vid, on YouTube videos, oh, you should just hang out volley more. Yeah, it's a six and a half hour round trip. And I do that sometimes. I drive to Hastings at 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I've worked I've worked the next day, so I've got to drive home in the evening. Yeah. I oh, bet you want you want to see another video. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah. You know that short video we rode around town, yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was the six hours I had for my day off <laughs> where I drove I drove six hours as well, that's twelve hours of my day. Oh my god. But yeah, I'll just go, I'll just drive up north to Scotland and ride a, uh, a rooftop and then come. <laughs> We're so salty. <laughs> I like being salty. I think it, I think it gives it gives life funness. I, I, the problem is, is we're pretty sarcastic. Sarcastic, and we're old. Or well, you're older than me, but I'm fairly old now. Dude, I've got ten years on you. Imagine when you're my age. All that whiz, extra wisdom I've I've soaked up over you. Think how livid and depressed you are now. What are you going to be like when you're my age? How livid I was when I was 22. I was, yeah. ba- I was basically 30 when I was 22. You're cooked. But I'm just the best type of cook, though. So, yeah, you're, you're, you're handling it, yeah? You, your your yeah. mental state is good? Yeah, I'm just, you know, like, there's like, like ups and downs. Like, I think I speak for everyone when I say, you have days where you're like, I am crushing lockdown. Look at me. I'm Dude. productive. You're like, I've, I've wrote, I've like, I've read 30 pages of a book. I've made lunch. I've reorganized my wardrobe. I've run a half mm. marathon. I'm going to train again. Like, you're like, I'm killing this. And then you wake up one day and be like, it's 10 o'clock. You haven't got out of bed. You're watching, like, Harry Potter oh. on, on, <laughs> on Netflix. And you're just, like, under your covers. Like, nah, I just, I feel sad. I want to see my mates. I hate this. I'm, I'm going to cry. Like, you go from that to that. Like, that, just constant. I oh, Personally, I find it's just up and down, up and down. Yeah. It's exactly the same for me. I'm, one minute I'm like thinking, Jesus Christ, I am so on it. Like I am untouchable. And then the next day, like yesterday I woke up, thought it was a bank holiday Monday. I was lounging on the sofa like with Wilson and I was just chilling thinking, yeah, you know, I'm going to cook some lunch in a bit, have a nice day. 
And I was getting emails from Roger at work and I was like, he never sends emails when he's not at work. I'm always, re I'm always replying to customers at the weekends and I, often I'll forward them guys emails just, you know, cause I know they'll be back in. I was like, why is he answering emails? And Jordan texts me, he's like, oh, you're going up the warehouse today. I was like, no, Jordan, it's bank holiday Monday. <laughs> and, then, and then I called Roger and he's like, no, we're all at work. I was like, well, what the working from home, but I was like miserable. So I went in and I was just like, oh, it's just, <laughs> yeah so, ups and downs yeah i, I just i well i, I think like because i'm quite a, a social person like to an extent i like to be out around friends i like to be around people being around just my family <laughs> it's a punishment i'm just like <laughs> you know like like you know when someone just says something you're just like you know you didn't need to say that just leave me alone just head down don't talk to them and that's how i feel sometimes it's like and you shouldn't be like, you're like i'm lucky enough to live with people but i just can't handle it sometimes have you been have you been having a few drinks at the weekend or not um i did a couple of weeks ago i was having like quite a few beers and then i just realized <laughs> that i was just like i was snowboarding I, I think i had like a few beers and then it was like oh it's 12 o'clock oh it's one o'clock i would be at one o'clock it was like Oh, it's half. It's twelve o'clock now. I haven't been. I was like, nah. That's gnarly. Yeah, they, they, that, they got to that point, and I was like, Shh. I was like, you need to just chill. Like, just so now I'm just. Where's my squash gone? No, I've just, had a couple. I've had a couple of beers at the weekend, and I've been looking forward to it. Just, just two or three. Just nice little IPA tins I bought from Tesco. Oh, they're so delicious. I found one that I really like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like I love. I love. A, I love a pale ale or an IPA, like a real like tasty one. This is one of the IPAs that's like, it's almost flat, but it's just so easy to drink. It's gorgeous. The, I think the problem was, um, my sister's boyfriend bought loads of Belgian beers. He bought like, I don't know, 80 bottles. And they're like, <laughs> and they're like 8.7%, 9.6%. Like, and you crack open like two of them and you are like, they're like just bottles, but, and they taste really good. There's like this chocolate, chocolatey one. And you're like drinking, you're like, oh, it's like a chocolate milkshake, like beer. It's like 8%. And you're like, and then you then I, like you just tipped over the edge. I seriously do not fuck with a beer if it's over. Like I literally look on the tin cans in Tesco, and if it's over four percent, nah, really? I just can't do it. Yeah, I, I the one that I've been drinking is like three point eight. I like weak beers. See, I, I, <laughs> I look at a can and I hit a five percent. <laughs> I'm like, poor oh, seven percent. I'm getting this bad boy. You're <laughs> see, that, that's like that's see that's the mentality. I, that's why I can't. That's why yeah. I'm an alcoholic when I drink yeah. it because I have got a very serious problem where I don't like to be in my own state of mind. And as soon as I start <laughs> altering it, I just it's a slippery slope for me. So I have to like, I'm. All one way or all another way. I can't be in between because I just don't work that way. And I'm I, I'm literally the opposite. I like to have a really chilled few drinks at home. And if I feel myself getting a bit like drunk, I'm like, oh, I don't like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm just gonna like have a bowl of cereal. <laughs> so yeah, you you've always been like that. Like, you always are just mad chill. Are Not you... always. That's a lie. Okay. Well, the majority of the time, you're pretty chill. Like, you're very like placid there's no like real big spikes of you oh don't get me wrong i like to go out and get yeah and then what i'm saying is you're not like you're like yeah where I'm, I'm, like, I'm not walking around the bar picking up <laughs> like half drunk drinks and drinking them with ash in the bottom like you are i used to, I used to smash that uh, <laughs> what was it brass monkey me and jordan Savage. damn i used to love those days but, not, but now, now I'm old and I just don't go out drinking. The only bar I go to is the bar at the gym. Dude, imagine like the world post coronavirus, and you just like someone's so, someone's got some CCTV footage of you from before coronavirus walking around the bar just drinking from everyone's drinks. Like, you, you think about how nuts that this was. This is like, what we need to learn from. In this situation, I used to drink, I used to mind sweep the absolute hell out of beers. Like, I would like finish a beer and be like, right, I'm going for a cigarette, put my empty glass up, like outside the smoking area, go out for a cigarette, come back and go, oh, a full drink, that's mine. <laughs> and just like, I would just be hammering it. Like, I'd go out with a tenner and go home with, like, in a taxi. <laughs> you're insane man i, I can't like, wait to, i can't wait to go out go out i just can't wait to go out again like i feel like if we ever get back to roughly like he's like yeah you can go party it will be like you know what i say to everyone was the best summer of my life was the summer of 2016 
which was the summer where England were in the World Cup, I wasn't working, and everyone just loved it, and it was sunny all the time. There's just beers everywhere. And that's what it would be like. Everyone should be happy. I it's resent a- that, because... I swear there were summers you had in Hastings that were better than that. What about the ones? Oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. Don't uh, say that a summer without me was your best <laughs> summer. <laughs> okay, right. I'm just going to say that, like, summers in Hastings were lit. The whole of my time in Hastings was lit. I loved every second of it. I think just living in, in um, the old flat was... Sorry to stop you just then. Is, are we still using lit as an expression or because well, you've been hidden away from the public for a I'm old, so I can number of that. months? I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's radical, dude. I'm not, like, down with the kids because, obviously, I don't speak with a fake London accent like most of them. Because you're stuck indoors with your family, so you're having to rehash old words like I'm, lit. I'm living in the darkest of Hampshire. <laughs> hey, so um, a lot of people were a little bit confused about Boris's guidelines and speech. I personally thought it was quite clear. I didn't really have a problem with it. I thought, use your common sense, but it feels like a lot of people were very, very confused about it. I understand that he, he, he didn't go into detail. There's lots of people that can't go to work because they've got kids at home and stuff like that. But for me, it was like, don't cough on people, stay away from people, be safe. What more is there to understand? Like, what I think is... Um, well, to indi- well, you can't just be like, like, say here's lockdown here, in my hand, and here's back to normal. You can't just be like, there you go, back to normal. Like, mm. you're going to have to ease into it. And he's not being like, right, you can only do this. He's been like, right, use your common sense, like you said. If you can go to work, go to work. If you cannot go to work, do not go to work. Like, to me personally, I cannot go to work, so I'm not going to work. <laughs> like, yeah, understood. If... If I like, Pre- if you can go to work and you work on a building site, or if you go, to, if you work in like a Starbucks and you can, you do takeaways, right? So you say the, the, a Starbucks yeah. near me, they open up, they're doing takeaways, right? You can go to work because you can go to work. Like, yeah. To me, perfectly simple. Like, go to a park and keep distance. That's fine. So go to a park and keep a distance. Don't go and start licking your mate's forehead. Like, yeah, it's, I think I think it's just it's pretty salient. It's just like get used to life in this new world which is be wary of other people don't you know wash your hands don't go around snogging your mate just because he's got the bubble gum that you like in his <laughs> mouth i don't know just like <laughs> i know i like i know what you and like all the boys do back in the day in Hastings, but like, it's not like back that. in the day it still goes down man <laughs> coronavirus or not <laughs> tongue in your mate from the brass monkey oh man don't <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, but then, but then I listened to Elon Musk, Joe Rogan podcast, and I'm a fan of Joe Rogan. I listen to a lot of his podcasts, Um, but I sort of stopped listening to that podcast and went away from that thinking that there's nothing to worry about because Elon Musk said so. (laughs) The thing with with Elon Musk, right, he is a very intelligent man and he is in incredibly clever he will obviously analyze a lot of things do you know what I mean like he will analyze everything so I think you need to take both things into consideration like if this extremely intelligent man who's like trying to help build AI is saying that things have been over exaggerated and there's um, you know there's doctors getting furloughed in like, other countries then like I, I'm going to listen to him because obviously he's one of those intelligent men we have like you, you can't just pick and choose what you want to hear. You have to listen to both sides of the story and make your own mind up. Mm. I think a lot of people are, well, a lot of people. I think I personally think are people who just like hate Boris for some reason. Like, yeah, he's not, Us. he's not Obama. Okay, fair enough. He's not like, but you're gonna hate, you're gonna hate any politician that's in front of, in charge of our country. So no other politician, like, no other Labour guy is gonna have done it better than Boris. Like political. Yeah, this, it, it, it really, like you, you only ever hear points of view from a Labour supporter. You won't ever see, see a, a, a Lib Dem being like, oh, I voted Lib Dem, they would have done it better. Oh, I voted Conservative, they would it's always a Labour well that's all, just what I've seen. I am fatigued of the of the sheer dislike for and how dislike for Boris and how it's so everyone's just like Oh fuck, Boris! It's like just give the guy a break, man. Like he's—he's he's doing his best. He had it. It's, like, <laughs> it's just like oh, just it's yeah. I get a bit tired of it all. But anyway, so yeah, Elon Musk was kind of saying that he thinks it's nowhere near as bad as what was once thought, and that we really should get back to normal and get things going again. And 
it's annoying because on one hand you're listening to all this advice coming in saying it's still a highly dangerous disease which it is and then you've got Elon Musk who's I'm not saying that you should listen to Elon Musk and change your life because of him but it's just so many different um, modes of information coming in it's sometimes it gets a bit tiring like which one to listen to and then the government aren't entirely clear because they can't be clear to everyone because they're trying to be have mass appeal and appeal to a big audience it's just it's just difficult what i would liken this to is having an argument with your bird right so (laughs) so like let's just say you've had a few of those as well right (laughs) i live basically i live in about a big bag of arguments with birds (laughs) really good one um (laughs) let's just say right for a say about steak argument um you argue with your bird you went out and got hammered with the boys. She's like, you went out and got hammered with you. Then you're lying to her. You're like, I didn't. <laughs> right? And then she starts to believe you. Right? So basically, you're so far in the wrong, you can no longer come back. Basically. So if you've, if you've overshot saying how bad Corona is, and you've been like, okay, it's this bad, everyone's going to die. And then you realise it's not that bad. You're so far over there now. You can't be like, oh yeah, sorry, babe, you are right. You've got to, like, you've got to try and ease your way back. You can't just be like, Oh yeah, no, I didn't go out. Oh, actually, yeah, I did. Because you're gonna get you get hit in the face. She should dump you, or do you know what I mean? It's you. There's no way you can just kind of go from one extreme to the other. You've got to be like, um, maybe. Yeah, so maybe we're just trying just a little bit. So do you think? So if 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 what Elon Musk was saying yeah. that actually actually we've all overshot this. It's not the death rate is way lower. It's actually not as bad as we first thought. If Boris Johnson's government and him and as a person knows that, then like you said, he he can't he can't just come out on his no. press release and say, guys, you know what? Go back to normal. It was actually nothing, to be honest with you. Yeah, he can't say that because there'd be uproar. He's gonna ha- no matter what they, he's got these lynching. And I'm not taking this away from anything. Like I know thousands of people have died, and it's it's a it's a tragedy. And I'm not trying to sound like oh, that's not a problem at all. So like I'm not don't don't make me out to be like some kind of Nazi. Jew oh, I, person. oh, I'm. Oh, no, no, I don't no, know no, anything. Not, I don't know anything. Like, no, anyway, yeah. but like, like it's a tragedy. People are people are dying. People that shouldn't die are dying. But uh, we, I'm just saying, by being devil's advocate and talking about both situations and both sides, mm. and saying that if you did overshoot it, you couldn't just jump back and be like, go back to normal, because you would get absolutely ruined. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't just come out and go. You know what, guys? Uh, it's actually not that bad. Just go, just go and get on with it. He has to. He has to say, ease yeah. back into it, Sorry. no matter what. And we're never. We're never going to know what. Happened. But let's just let's just hope that it wasn't as bad as what they thought, and and they did make a little mistake, and I'm then just we hope you want to ease back into it. Let's hope that is the case. Yeah, so yeah I really hope the death just drop off, and it's. I like you know. I hope it's like a SARS. I mean, when SARS just kind of disappeared, mm. that'd be nice. I was listening to this thing it was saying like obviously, um. If, if a disease has a high death rate, it's not as dangerous because people can't spread it. Like Ebola, for example, I think 60% of pe- people get Ebola and die within four days. So it, it doesn't spread because they're dead. You know, like, <laughs> but the, the the thing about a virus that um, doesn't, doesn't kill you is it spreads to a lot of people. Yeah, like syphilis and chlamydia. <laughs> Um, dude, this is one thing that happened over the weekend. Um, actually, I don't know when it happened, but it ca- it came out on social media. Possibly the biggest handrail ever done on a BMX bike. Oh. Absolutely jaw dropping. I was I, walking through the, through the park with my son, and then I opened that, and I was like, "Wow!" I I posted on my story because, like, you know, you look at something on Instagram, and you're like. You're like, oh, okay, there's a massive stair set. He's going to like firecrack it just ride down the stairs. And he hopped on the rail, and I'm pretty sure I went. It was his name, that Callan. Um, Callan Stibards did a, did the, I think it was in Venice, Venice, no, it was somewhere in California on the beach. There's a huge rail, um, sand at the bottom, but incredibly steep, 70 stair handrail, apparently. No, no, it's, 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 it's concrete at the bottom. It's, it's concrete then sand. So it's like, it's yeah. legit. Yeah, for sure, but it's like near the beach, so you see sand. It's and then I was looking at the comments, and Chase Dehart, I think, said something about 
the obstacles in the way at the bottom and i didn't even see that you're, just, you're looking at the, the yeah. size of this handrail and i was like wow all the crap that you could ride into if you get off early and s- the fact he did it more than once is an absolute testament to the size of his testicles because like <laughs> can you, like i wouldn't do, do like a 10 stair can you imagine 70 and that like that thing looked so steep like, yeah, but but you know the risk involved in that he could have the well, fact yeah the fact that he tried the, it the, the last once. time he did it he sheared his crank it off like he sheared he just cranked it like he yeah and then so, and someone else said which is a good point because there's always going to be a lot of hate or there's always going to be the the minority that start saying oh we didn't pull it because the rail is officially pulled if you ride the rail right to the very end and pull off but then someone pointed yeah. out which is true, I didn't even think about this, which I should because I ride BMX of most days of my life, is that if he had pulled off the end, he wouldn't have been able to handle the impact of pulling off the end of the rail because his feet would have blown off. Like he got off and then rode down the last like 10 stairs or whatever because that was like the only way to ride out of it. No, he, he did it at the bottom. He came off at the bottom. Shoot, that's where he shoot his crank. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so I'm saying it was yeah. Im- impossible to do all of it you know the one, yeah. the first one they showed on the Instagram, wasn't it? Was the one that he came yeah. off early. I honestly think if you actually came right off the end of the rail, like that would have sheared your head tube off. There's yeah. no like there like the force of that impact, like it's, yeah, it's nuts. Like but your bike's not built to take like that kind of in, impact. It's it's crazy. It's like you know every now and then someone does something like that where it's just going to live forever. That's one of those things that everyone's always going to remember you know it's such a huge moment and th- those kind of things just grab everyone's attention don't they i like, think my comment i think my comment on it was like the whole world will see this and well that's the thing like you don't have to even be a bmxer to appreciate how crazy that is. like anyone that i know would be like that's mental because it's just the sheer size anything big is impressive Wow. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, so sh- massive shout out to Callan Stibbard. I-, I met him actually. He's a nice guy. Shook his hand. Of course you did. He's, he's got a Big time. Um, so when you're doing tours, but, the Vans Vert series or Red Bull Vert series, whatever, like, I don't know what you did. Man, I've been out there. I've grafted. Bright Urban Games 01 champion. I'm, I, I got forced into being a vert rider so that I could make money out of BMX. That's that's doing something you don't want to do t- for money. No one wants to ride vert. That's why Jamie Desk is good at it because no one else, <laughs> no one else rides. Because it's absolutely <laughs> terrifying. Oh yeah, he... Well done, Jamie. You've won due to vert again. Who who was your competition? No one. <laughs> like that's who, not fair. Who's going to escape? I'll be like, yeah, sorry guys, you have a fun session over there. I'm gonna go ride that 15 foot vertical ramp by myself with my motorcycle helmet. No offense, Jay Bess. <laughs> not many people ride vert, but that's no, that's not true, Jamie. No, he's in, he's in, Jamie's he's incredible, incredible riding vert, but I just no one wants to ride it. It's boring. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is horrible, but they, they are quite fun too. Wow, I, I've ridden at least three vert rounds in my life, and I can tell you they were the worst times of my life on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually really fun if you carve and you it's like feels like trails. <laughs> <laughs> you're the new school. You're Core like did. your feet your feeble grinds on flat ledges. I'm new school. Shut up, mate. Hey, so I think I just looked at that Callan Callan Stibbard's rail this morning, mm. and I may be wrong, but. I don't think it went as viral as what you would have thought it was going to go viral. And, 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 and let me, let me just explain. I watched it again on Instagram. It's about 40 seconds long. The video they put on Instagram yeah. too long. And they use multiple cuts in an Instagram post. Yeah. Now that's not the nature of that platform. They should have kept that, that those cuts for the video. They should have put an iPhone clip with someone's reaction in it. Yeah. yeah for the instagram story with a bit of a shaky footage kept it five seconds ten seconds long had a reaction and then do you know what i would have done ollie yeah. i would have put a cold watermark on the bottom of that in of that clip 
so that when it does go viral, everyone sees that and they can't get rid of it. You're not wrong there. And speaking from a man who's had a few viral hits in his time. No, I mean, just, the, you know. No, I, no, I, you, I agree. Like, you, you, want it, you want to, as you're scrolling through, be like, push up, rail, done, someone's face, done. That's it. You don't want to be like, yeah, oh, exactly. Okay, what's happening here? Yeah, no, I'm bored. Scroll. Yeah, I, I think I think I, I think I checked it and it had, I don't know, but like, if they would have thought about that a little bit more, I'm not saying they didn't. Like, I'm not I'm not calling them out, but, and I know I know I get it. I'm sure he's a cool rider and they don't mind. But it's had 379,000 views on the cult Instagram. It, I think it could have gone a million easier if they'd kept it shorter. Yeah. Well, if, it had, if it had gone shorter, it would have got picked up by someone else, like a skier or like a base jumper, somebody who's got millions of followers and they would have plugged it. So. Well, if it was short, ESPN, all those sports center, you know, you, I, I haven't seen it anywhere else other than the cult Instagram and all the BMX's Instagrams, but I may be wrong if someone wants to, I don't know. But anyway, taking away, not taking anything away from the fact that that was one of the biggest most gnarliest feats ever done on a BMX bike. That impressive. Simple as that. Simple as that. Just keeping it on BMX. Have you seen the new Fiend video? Uh, pass. <laughs> Wu Tang. No, I did watch a little bit of the end of. I will watch it, but I did see it. it's thirteen minutes long, so I haven't had time yet. But I did see a, a little bit of Garrett's, and obviously, it was ridiculous. I like. I've been watching loads of BMX recently and I was watching and I was like, how on earth are all these heavy hitters in like one place? Like you watch Lewis Mills and you're like, this guy is absolutely incredible. Like he's so swaggy and he, he's got so much personality. I think the problem is that's why he sticks out. So not the problem, that's why he sticks out in Fiend and in general in BMX because he actually puts personality out there. Whereas yeah. a lot, I feel like a lot of BMXs not point fingers and calling people out don't have a personality they're just like they try and keep like woo shots fired like well, no like personally I've seen it all I've worked in BMX Garrett wow Garrett, so, so, right. so, <laughs> someone's firing shots Garrett, today Garrett the best rider in the world Un- undoubtedly the best rider in the world and I'm sure he's a lovely guy I've never met him right but I've ne- like I've never met him I don't know what he's like I don't know how like I've seen like a few clips of Deadline where he's like putting fireworks on and that's I think that's fun. But like I don't I don't know what he's like, I can't buy into him. Like we, we sold his frame at seventies. Wasn't a great selling frame. Best ride in the world. Okay, fair 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 but point. I, fair I, point. I, I think it comes down to personality. Do you know what I mean? But like yeah. but do you mean that you watch that video and you're like, these guys are all there. Like their level is incredible. They're doing like multiple bar spins. Like I think Lewis Mills did a 540 truck fakie down magma yeah yeah i i think it's so it's the riding's so good but maybe i I, like i haven't i haven't watched it yet sometimes i think they could maybe do a short video but do it do it around one of those crazy tricks and go into it and talk about it and break it down and analyze it and let's see like what went into that clip and the story behind it and what did you have for breakfast like i'm interested in that stuff i'm interested in you as a person rather than all those tricks that you've done on a bike i I, that's what i I guess that's what you're saying right i think it's important to have both sides of it because i can appreciate i will happily sit there and watch garrett ride all day long but like yeah yeah, i want to watch i want to watch what he does like what do you do for fun does he play video games he play golf like I want to know about it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, buy sure. into, I, want to, I want to know about it. I buy into people I know. Like, yeah. I want to know someone before I buy into it. That's just how it 100%. Is. That's like the first rule of marketing class. How is it, sir? Not that I went. But yeah, no, you're, you're 100% right. But I will get around to watching that. Um, so what else is, have you have you had, managed to get out on the, on your bike at all? I've been hammering quite a few miles on the road bike, actually. Well, on my BMX or the road bike? BMX. I haven't ridden my BMX yet. Hopefully, now that we can go to parks, I know what I just saw on Instagram before we spoke, Bournemouth Council are opening the skate park on next week. So Amazing. So I'm going to like literally go and hit 
a skate park as soon as I possibly can. Because I've literally been watching so many road falls and so much prop. Like, I'm like, I want to go around the bike so bad. I want pegs back on, I'll go road bike. I've been like clucking. Come. We need to go on a road trip, get 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 all of our friends together and just go and ride loads of different stuff once this is all road over. Road trips are sick. I love road trips. You don't. I mean, I like them, <laughs> I like them for three days. It's good for three days. Um, back, back to that big rail. I was scrolling through Instagram and there's a, one of the British BMX riders, his name's Peel. He posted the, the clip of Callan Stibbard's big rail. And, uh, you know, like the location on his Instagram was just stay stay home st- stay safe stay home <laughs> just like the, ir- the the irony of that like because he did that rail during our lockdown officially yeah, like, we years were... ago. it was years, years ago what that rail was done like two years ago you are joking man. no I, I watched an anthony panza video and uh about a year ago it was done and they just been sitting they just been sitting on the footage i think well that's what that's that's what i got from anthony panza's video Cause, wow because he wanted to post something about it because he was he was on that trip wow yeah okay so, so it, it, it wasn't even it, like it wasn't even breaking lockdown it was like it was literally like a year old yeah oh it, regardless <laughs> that's incredible they sat on the footage that long but regardless of that it was just funny it was so ironic yeah. that post that he posted because he wasn't saying it's a bad thing no. he was just like look how crazy this is and then the irony of stay yeah, home stay, stay safe. safe do a 70 stair handrail Australians are just cooked, though, aren't they? Australians are literally cooked. Yeah. I don't think I, I don't think I know one Australian that's not mental. No, they're all crazy. Literally, every single one of them. It's either they're so crazy with everything, with all the little things they're doing in their life, including drinking, <laughs> or they're ridiculous on a bike, yeah. like way way better than everyone else for some weird reason. It's strange. Australia just breeds it. Like you got, but I think, you, I think if you go to Australia, they just their way of life is happy. Like yeah. when I've always been there, what you think? I don't know about that. In my per- in my personal experience, when I've been there, um, like, every, like it's always sunny. Like, I, yeah, it's always sunny. Everyone, I feel like everyone like hangs out more, and you can like, go to the beach. You can kind of like, hang out more. Like, it's it's more. I think it's more a public hangout place than like in England. It's like to come somewhere else. Yeah, should, no, should it's true. Else, where they're like, I'm going to go to a park, let's go to a beach, whereas in England it's like, you come to my house. No, that's true. We sold a bike, I sold a bike to someone in Australia the other day and he phoned up randomly, not many people phone. And he was like, yeah, he moved to Australia from England. He was like saying, I would never want to live in England because I've done that. And it's just people stay indoors. And here we go surfing and ride bikes and just such an outdoors life. Yeah, everyone that I've known that's moved there has been like, I ain't coming back. Yeah. RIP Matt's girlfriend. How how healthy are you at the moment as far as food? Because I I don't see you as much anymore because obviously the lockdown. Usually I, I I know what you're eating and what your uh, diet's my, like. But I'm I'm on it at the moment. I'm like tracking everything. Although like my meals are pretty cooked, but like you're gonna think I'm weird, okay? So I wake up and I would usually, usually train around seven forty five now. Like in that's late. Yeah, usually I train like six, but. So I'm having a lie in. Like I'll wake up and I'll I eat the same thing every day. So I have two crumpets, and then on each crumpet I have 11 grams of peanut butter, and then I have 200. You're waiting for me to laugh when you said that. <laughs> then, like, then, go on, then laugh. I have 200 mils of egg whites on top of the peanut butter. So you crumpet, peanut butter, and egg whites on top, yep. and then I put honey on the eggs. <laughs> wow. I put 10 grams of honey on the eggs, and then salt and pepper. But like. So peanut butter and eggs, so, bang. Well, well, and then just salt and pepper. Weird. Trust me, peanut butter and egg, bang. Like, so, like, I was put onto this by someone, and I was like, "You're mental. You're like, why are you putting eggs on peanut butter? And you try it, it will change your life." I, I've been sessioning that um, that peanut butter with made with marmite. Oh my god! No, you're, you need to go to the bit. <sighs> what do you mean? You're saying you put salt on? It's the same thing. It's just salty peanut butter. No, 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 no. So I put peanut butter, eggs, yeah. honey, salt and pepper. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. No, like you're no, putting no, a salty like, substance no, ma- in no, with no, peanut butter. No, but marmite and peanut butter doesn't go together. It's not nice. You're weird. No one likes it. Like, okay. it, tastes, it tastes like Play-Doh. 
Coming from the person that's just told me he puts honey with salt and pepper and eggs and peanut butter for the first meal of the day. Yeah. So, anyway. So I eat that, and then I train, and then I usually um, I have like a sesame bagel, bacon, eggs, like some fruit, and then I have like dinner, and then I have like a hobnob bar and some chocolate, and then I have- Oh, sick. Yeah, wait. Like, that's what I'm saying. That's what, This is what I'm saying. Like, oh, you know. I'm every, uh, every night after dinner- I am in the biscuit tin. I can't stay away, stay out of there. It's my addiction. I <laughs> what are you big rolls? Do you know what? I've reverted. I've gone to Rich Teas because I'm thinking it's got. They've got less Whoa, sugar and less Rich chocolate. Tea, keeping it old school. Yeah, proper old school. Proper the most boring biscuit. Not even ever. a malted milk. You're just hitting a Rich Tea. I know, but I'll, I'll, I'll session a pile of them because I need to, <laughs> we need what, to get a that decaf sh- tea with a pile of biscuits. Yeah, Classic. 8 p.m. Classic. Oh, yeah. I remember when you used to go through literally a pack of fig rolls a night. Dude, fig rolls, man, are so good. They're not. I think I was telling myself they're healthy because they got figs in, but they're literally, coated in pastry. They are just sugar. <laughs> yeah, so good, though. They're a great pre-workout, though. But I found, right, if I, you know, because I'm sort of up and down with, like, eating really well and then sometimes i'm just like you know living life and relaxing and eating just you know yeah i i'm sure lots of people go up and down with it up and down with exercising too most of the time for the most part if it was a plateau across the whole year i'm exercising a fair bit and eating quite good on average yeah. but i find that if you know like once before when i've been fat i've looked in the mirror and thought i need to lose weight and i've literally cut everything out yeah like i'm not gonna eat a slice of bread i'm gonna cut out all sugar i'll eat like nothing but protein and vegetables and then i find that i wake up so early it's really weird like i'll go to bed at like it's like i don't need sleep but then after some extensive reading i figured out that I'm waking up because I'm hungry and my brain is saying you need to be out looking for food. Yeah, you need to hunt and find food. <laughs> yeah, because like apparently the worst thing you can do for sleep is to be hungry. Yeah, because your, Cause, body, cause, your body needs yeah, your, your brain's saying, get what, like your brain's waking you up saying you need to go and find food. So I'm waking up at four in the morning thinking this is sick, but then it's not sick because I've had five hours sleep, four hours sleep. Yeah, I have the same problem. Like if I if I'm like really like cutting weight down and I want to like look really lean, um, like it's happened to me a few times now. I'll like I'll drop my calories down to something stupid like one thousand eight hundred, two thousand calories, and then when your body when my body fat gets really low, I just your testosterone starts dropping off, and then your sex drive starts dropping off. Um, yeah. And then because all your body is thinking about it, it's, not, it's not thinking about breathing anymore. It's just thinking, I need to eat. Like, <laughs> I like I'm gonna die. Feed me. <laughs> so like you like usually you're like, oh, do you see that bird? And you're like, no. You're like, oh, burger. Like, you literally don't even care about. <laughs> yeah, burgers. yeah. It's like I just want to eat burgers. Speaking of burgers, that... Seven Bone has just uh, opened back up for collections. Love it. And I'm gonna hit that this weekend. Yeah, I, I'm down with that. But like for me, the, the the good thing about eating a burger is when you go out in the restaurant and you, 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 you have a beer first and they bring it to you and it's just like a social experience. If you bring me a soggy ass burger in a, with a wet bun with, to my house. With some floppy chips. I'm just like, and the dude drops off and runs away like he's done something wrong, which he has. He's just giving you a wet bun. It's like, cheers, mate. 15 quid. Nice one. Can we um, just rewind a second and we'll go back to this, right? So when we go out to eat burgers, Baz will always order a beer and he absolutely hates it if someone brings out his food before he's finished his beer. Like, this makes me laugh so much. We used to go out eat, um, eat burgers every Wednesday, burger and beer night. Not the greatest health, op- <laughs> health option, by I, the way. And I was, I was training for an ultramarathon whilst we were doing this. <laughs> Oh no, wasn't I? No, yeah, no, wasn't I? Just I was just running because I didn't drink during the ultramarathon, but like I was still running loads. So we'd have a beer, and if Baz got like this far down and the food would come out, he'd be like, "Don't know if we're having a beer now. Just I'm not going to enjoy it." <laughs> uh, my my number one thing is when you go out to eat is I like to have the drink, especially a beer when I'm hungry. I'm waiting for my food. I'm chatting to my friends, and it's nice. But then once you get your food. You're eating. You're not. You're not thinking about drinking. It's just like 
I just I get it. You I sit get in it. a restaurant. You sit in a restaurant for twenty minutes, and they bring a drink over when you. It's like that's what drives me crazy. That's why I love. That's what I loved about living in America is the service in restaurants was so good. You sit down in a restaurant and before you've even sat down. Someone saying, "Would you like a drink?" And they they and they've already brought you a water and, and ice over before you've even sat down. And then you, you the second your bum touches the seat, what do you, what would you like to drink, sir? I'll have a cold beer cup of tea and a raspberry lemonade please <laughs> triple triple stack. oh and some and some chips and salsa and a cider case though while i think about what i'm gonna eat thank you very much no problem when in england it's like you sit down and you're like waiting for 20 minutes to get water and you're like, you're like sorry excuse, excuse me I, and they're like what and you're like just i might die of thirst can i have a glass of water <laughs> And then you get yeah. you get a hot cup <laughs> with tap <that> water, <laughs> some water cooking itself, and you're like, mm, yeah. hot water. <laughs> yeah. yeah, awesome, thanks. And then by the time you order the drink, they take your drink order, your starter, your main order, your food comes out <laughs> before your drink. <laughs> you're eating, uh, you're eating cheap, you're eating your Nando's, and then someone's like, oh, here's your coke, and you're like, I don't want that now. So I get it. If it, if if I had a lot of money and I was opening a restaurant in England, I would take. I would, I would hire 15 people to run the restaurant. I would take them all to America for two weeks <laughs> and I, I would eat out every night and then I wouldn't say anything and I'd go home and I'd be like, we're going to open a restaurant now. And they would all know. Do it. Do it. <laughs> just, just, just do that. Okay. I think honestly, yeah, the best, one of the best food I have, like best time I'll have was like, I went, I went to te- Austin, Texas and ate incredible food the whole time I was there. That was sick. It's just, it's just, there's nothing nothing better than good service and lots of food when you order it and that's, that's what america do right you know and happy hour happy hour is good in america i was never a fan of happy hour when i lived in america because i didn't like drinking early but i suppose you don't have that problem do you i'm the opposite i'd rather drink early <laughs> to be fair I, I like drinking in the daytime better now than i do i think the older you get the more you realize that daytime drinking is the place to be like if, if you are gonna drink then start hitting beers at one. Get drunk by four. By f- no, it's good. By, by, yes. by five, you're like, I could eat, eat a big meal. Yeah. By eight o'clock, yeah. you are ready for bed. It's literally like the last time I went to Austin, Texas, we went um, floating down the river in the tubes and you do it in the daytime you lay back on your tube you know you, you drive up you leave one car down the river you drive up the river a few miles you all get out you tie your beers in their own little float <laughs> to your little tube and you just lay back with sunglasses on with like a 12 pack and you just lay there and float down river there's loads of people on different um, floats all floating around you everyone's just drinking starts off pretty chill by the time you get like a mile down the river people are just like tops off all that kind of stuff <laughs> and it's just, yeah and then and then you get home and it's like 6 p.m and you have some food and go to bed wake up the next day feel fine yeah. no one needs a hangover especially when you get to our age like i mean especially your age but like hangovers just hit you like it, it's not even just Dude. the sickness it's the the depression that hits you like an absolute ton of bricks oh man and i'll get it i'll, I'll, I'll get the depression and the anxiety whilst i'm out having fun because i know tomorrow's coming i'm like i'm like oh no you know what tomorrow means <laughs> you know, like, you're just like no nah. and then for like the next three days you're just like oh god i just feel awful like i'm not even happy yeah it's a happiness load when you go out and then you substitute then you and then like you said yeah you you eat terribly the next day and yeah because you're like oh i'll have some bad food and then if you're feeling really bad you're like oh i'll just have i have a beer to take the edge off hair of the dog a beer to take the edge off so you take, start taking the edge off and then then the next day you're like, oh, I'll take the edge off and then you, yeah, and then it's a slippery slope. Next thing you know, you're sat in a bus stop on the seafront in Hastings. With some, some tenants being like, what's happened? <laughs> it's 8.5. <laughs> 9%, crack it that one. Cool. Like, open it, like melts your face off it. Start singeing your eyebrows. <laughs> God, Ollie, we have to keep an eye on you. Hey, so so as a single person on lockdown, is there a sex life or is it a purely manual process? It is literally, one, I think it's one of the saddest I've ever been in a date in the dating scene. Like what now? Yeah, like the problem is because you don't know when the end is. Like usually, if yeah. you're chatting to a girl, you're like, "Ah, oh, see her on Wednesday. We we'll go out for a drink and then we can," you know what I'm saying? Whereas here, it's like 
you have to try and make a conversation for a, for a long period of time without knowing there's going to be an end. It's like having a pen, yeah. it's like having a pen pal, being like, you've run out, you've run out of things to say. Like, I suppose, I suppose it could always the, the conversation could always be before before lockdown is, oh, you know, I'll be seeing you next week, yeah. or you've got a date in mind. The problem yeah. is, if you haven't got something in common with them, like if you if you don't like enjoy the same sport, you don't like. There's only so much information you can find out about a person. There's only so much opinion, and if you're talking to them, like we're all we're all bored, right? So you can talk to someone for like five hours a day texting, because what else are you gonna do? You might as well reply to a text. So you're gonna run, you run out of things to say, and you're like, should we just call it off for a few weeks and then get back to this when like <laughs> when this is back on or what? I don't know. Just have have a break up, even though you've never got together because you've got nothing in yeah, common. It's gnarly. If you've got nothing in common with these girls, Ollie, just stop talking to them. Then find me a find me a wife, man. This is hard work out here. You don't need a wife, bro. Or was it what's what's that um saying you always say? Good eye, God. What's oh Kit Kat? Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. Dark as well. What? Oh, are you, t- are you talk are you talking about marriage as punishment for shoplifting in some countries? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I used to, I remember that saying because every time I would have a bird or something, and I'd be like, "You gotta leave me," and you'd be like, and "You'd just <laughs> reel off some kind of like." horrendous relationship advice like that that's that's my favorite piece of relationship advice of all time marriage is punishment for shoplifting in some countries <laughs> and like, every time it's always that i just whenever i think about marriage I just think of that it makes me laugh this is that's from a, a film called wayne's world I'm like, great I'm film i this is these are the moments where i I dislike you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like you, you haven't seen Wayne's World, but you've got time to watch all of the back catalogue of props BMX videos. Mind blown again. Like I just, I don't know. I need to be like, I'm when I watch a film, I want it to be like forced into my face. I don't want to be like. Yeah, you like you like like Fantastic Four and all Thor, those fast like, two. Uh, yeah, like Marvel <laughs> films like Thor or like Thor Ragnarok, like anything decent, like. It's been, but you're not you're not about to watch like Lost in Translation or like Casino or you know like the names just like they don't they don't sound like fun names like it's not like Iron Man the Edge of Destruction is it it's like oh. <laughs> I, you watch the worst films bro I remember you, I remember I used to be watching films and you and Alex would be like what are you doing. <laughs> You just like you, you, it's like you find the most colourful f- yeah. thumbnail for a film <laughs> with good. the most American. As long as it's got muscles and the American flag on it, you <laughs> watch <laughs> it. <laughs> and guns, and explosions. Yeah. But saying that, I did my favourite films are Notting Hill and Lo- um, Not Love Actually um, about time. So. Yeah, and I, I introduced you to both of yeah. those. Both great films. Do you remember, do you remember when we laid on the sofa with our, with our duvets watching Notting Hill? <laughs> like, I feel like, well, like in winter, we literally watch rom-coms every single week. I love rom-coms. I remember watching Notting Hill for the first time being like, this is the best film ever. And then watching About Time being like, this is the best film ever. So good. I'm um, speaking of TV. Have you watched Afterlife? The new series? Yep. Yeah, because I actually cried real tears down my face at the end of that. Like, like actually, like, I was but like, <laughs> like blubbering, like sat in my bed crying, like actual real tears. I was that emotional. He does a Ricky Gervais does a really good like cry face, doesn't he? Yeah, like, you know when he's like, and you, you you can't help but like well up. I think I, I was just the way he he got you to really. Fall, like, fall in love with the character even more in this series and really feel sorry for him because he started doing nice things for other people and he, and he mm. started like and then he, everything bad happened to him and you're just like I can't take this like I felt the pain myself it was horrible yeah I really did like it I did feel like he in this in the first series it was all about how sad he was but I thought that this series might have been a little bit like I got a bit fatigued by his. It was very his, sad. His, it, I liked the sad. The sad scenes were good, but when he kept going on about his, I don't know. It was good. He's really good. He's a really good um, writer for sure. I, and and I, and I think he's a great actor. Such a good actor. I think yeah. If you want a good cry, watch it because I think I feel like everyone's emotions are a lot higher in lockdown. Like 
they're sitting a lot higher because you don't have the normal distractions of life to keep you like level. Yeah, that's so true. I feel like your emotions are elevated. So you, yeah, you'll, that's, you'll, that's probably you'll feel true. more things. Like, so if you're talking to someone like talking to a girl, you'll, you'll start fancying them more. And if you're like, anything happens, <laughs> maybe this, this is the thing because you, you no longer have daily distractions. It's, yeah, that's so true. You, you feel, I personally think you feel things more. What? maybe you're in you're you're in a little bit of like fight or flight mode as well where you're yeah you're, you've got a little bit more anxiety so like your feelings are heightened i definitely i, I think that so i think that i probably might I probably might not have cried watching that if i wasn't in lockdown and i wasn't already like feeling unsure about life remember um the girl that we met on mary poppins katie the the makeup was she makeup girl or um oh yeah I remember. I, cost 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 yeah, no, costume that, girl yeah. Yeah, she she worked on afterlife too Did she? I'm, uh, yeah i remember seeing her instagram last summer of her like hanging out with ricky gervais and just living I was like, yeah and then it came out this year and i was yeah she's cool though she's a nice girl a lot of people a lot of um, people were nice in that film some people not so nice it was such a good experience, isn't it? Yeah, it was good. I, mean, I was thinking, of, it was thinking about that the other day. Like when we were actually filming the actual main scene, how much pressure that was. Like it was crazy, how many people, how many people were in that room, and and how many like like when they call action, there's is there's nothing like that feeling. There was like you got the assistant, our assistant. What were the, what they called first ads? Yeah, first, yeah. There's like loads of them, weren't there? They all got walkie talkies. They're like, what are they saying? They're like, count down and like, Rolling. oh, it's just Rolling. yeah. But then then the director's on on like a full on um, mic, yeah. isn't he? Like, oh, it was just oh, that was a buzz. Like, it was you you never experienced anything like it. Like, yeah, it I, I remember coming down and hitting that quarter, and you remember coming down like a little train and hitting quarters. And I was like, I was like so aware that I just couldn't like fuck up because I was like, I, was like, I can't be the only one to fuck up air in a quarter pipe. But like the, the amount you're thinking about, you're just like, I'm going to fuck it up. I'm going to like hang up and like jackknife or anything. <laughs> Dude, like usually I'm pretty good at like switching on like the professional sort of mode in those situations. But do you remember when we did that big rehearsal in front of all the Disney execs? <laughs> So this, so it wasn't it wasn't for the actual film, but on our set, um, there was like okay, there was this big talk on Friday. We're going to do this massive like performance for all the Disney execs. They're going to come over from Hollywood and come and watch, and all the act- actors and everyone in the whole film that was that was important came in the room, didn't yeah. they? And then we had to we had to like do our rehearsal, oh and I was behind you, and your chain, <laughs> my chain like, came off. <laughs> <laughs> oh that was literally the worst <laughs> and and it wasn't like you could just stop and like in in rehearsals you could stop and be like start my chains come off like you had to carry on like this was it and i was just i blew up you know when you're not supposed to laugh in class and you can't help it i had like like i had liquids coming out like of my eyes <laughs> i was like i was like i'm gonna get cut i'm gonna lose the biggest payday of my life because of this bloody chain i think i was like no <laughs> and i was laughing behind you and i saw you struggling to, to pedal oh, i was so I good go, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, it was <laughs> making some horrendous <laughs> noise wasn't it and i was just i was just thinking everyone that is like m- like important is watching this right now Literally. and you were you, you of, basically of Dave disney watched me my chain come off of me trying to ride a bike across a, <laughs> a, a lubed up floor <laughs> you did you did well to hold it together because like that was every one of us was so reliant on the other like if you had completely gone off then in effect like the whole thing would have been ruined because everyone's um choreography relied on everyone else's yeah. choreography wasn't it it was I like I did, I did it for the team man <laughs> you were just <laughs> that like the luck though that couldn't that that didn't happen all day but it happened in those 10 just, seconds like. just when the whole of disney is watching their biggest <laughs> film they're ever going to spend money on in the next 10 years <laughs> hi <laughs> But then at the end, they were like, yeah, yeah, that was great. And I was, I just thought, you, well, no, it wasn't. You don't, you, because you don't know what you're watching. It, it couldn't have gone any worse, actually. Oh, 
They oh. were so good, man. I miss all the free food we used to get on set. Oh. Do you remember when I asked you to come to the audition for that and you nearly you nearly didn't come because of a woman? And that is an example of Yeah. You being we, didn't we go we went to a um contest, didn't we? We went to some kind of like contest and, and camp the night before in Wales, do you remember? We went to like if like could Oh yeah. Like Radfest, it was... And I just like I think I broke up my bird and then like just got back with her the day before and stayed at her house. She's like, I wanna come to the, the to this thing too. And I was like, okay, cool. So I brought her like all the way. To... <laughs> I'm such an idiot with girls. Like, and I'm the worst guy with girls. And you're like, because cause I knew that we were both going to the audition. I'd got you into the audition. And then you're like, yeah, I might not come tomorrow. I was, and I remember saying to you, Ollie, just do me a favor, yeah? Just take about 10 seconds to think about the repercussions of this. Like, I almost didn't get paid all that money. I didn't almost have the experience of my life. I, all because... Oh, I want to go home. I'm tired. So you want to wake up and cuddle your girlfriend and sort of drive to an audition? I mean, she's still fit now. The saga. The saga continues. But yeah, no, I I can't believe that I almost did that. So many times in my life I have done stuff because of a girl. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But that's why I'm bringing it up. So hopefully you'll learn. I don't, I, that... I don't think I even learned my lesson now. I think I still do it now. I'm pretty sure. I... Have you had one of those, you know, everyone on lockdown, I know this is a bit old news, but everyone was using Zoom to talk to their friends. And yeah. Have you, have you done that? Zoom, yeah, have you I tried had a Zoom quiz with uh, the, guy, the guys from um, <laughs> the gym. It was actually really fun. Oh, yeah. was it? Like, Because my experience of Zoom is all of you sit there, you've got like nine people on the screen and because everyone's trying to talk, there's just nothing there's no dialogue conversation so everyone just sits there going like this smiling <laughs> no it's I, don't, I, it's I, I know like... I wasn't awkward I've done a few like, I did one where I did uh, join him at my gym and did like an uh, online class that was fun and then we do we've done a few we've, done a, we've done a few quizzes um, and that's fun because it's like I don't know I think I, no one kind of like, everyone's like having a chat and it's just kind of chill and then I, I did they, um oh yeah I did I did with that um the workout one with Toby and Matt the other day. That was fun. Sorry, I haven't got gym friends like you. Jimmy Eat well. Well, you should get some gym friends because they're sick. Friends! Gym, friends! Gym friends! <laughs> yeah, no, they're sick. I love my gym friends. Okay, well, I'll have to set up a Zoom call with your BMX friends. All, all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the third one? <laughs> yeah, I haven't got... Oh, yeah, Grace doesn't ride anymore, does he? <laughs> Just you and that. Yeah. Um, what else has been going? I just actually I just rode home to get lunch because I broke the van yesterday, which was cool. I got out of the van because it was so windy. I managed to break the door, so potentially me getting out of the van cost me five hundred quid. So that was how good my day how was going yesterday. It's actually not bad because that's why I was late today because I took it to a garage and the guy managed to bend it back and he said it's a common problem with Ford Transit vans that the hinges bend. I was like, brilliant. But anyway, so I rode home at lunchtime, which is part of a bit more exercise, which is good. Had lunch, rode back, listened to David Dobrik's podcast. You ever listen no, to that? No, I, um, I used to watch him literally before he was cool. So I might get involved with his podcast. So I watched that video you sent me earlier of him and I thought it was very funny. So I'm going to get... How good is that video? Like, what I liked about it is it, there was, it gave me at no point a break of my attention. It was like, do, 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 yeah. do, 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 And he speaks really quick like this. He's like, so you're, like, you're constantly, like, engrossed in it. So it's not like, at no point you're like, oh, he's walking somewhere. What's happening? It's like, mm. bam, 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 bam. So it's good. But that's, that, that's his style with making YouTube videos is... He used to be really popular on Vine, I think. And then his style was just to take, it's almost like Instagram stories, isn't it? It's just, there's no, yeah. there's no narrative. Just, there's like, no happened, like happened, one happened. thing. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, it's like 10 of the craziest things that happened to him in the last week, all in one four minute video. Yeah. And so every one of them is so good. But it's funny because I've been watching his channel, for, watch all of his videos. Cause like you said, they're highly entertaining. But, um, Something I found really interesting in the podcast I just listened to, he's talking about TikTok. Mm. And this is something that I said about TikTok to Stu recently, as I said, I think it's such a good platform. It's so good and it's so engaging and it hits 
so many different pe- types of people on so many levels, I think there's a real danger that it's going to, um, it's going to be a real threat to other platforms like YouTube, like face, like, so, and, and David Dobrik said the same thing. He said, he said, he said, I love TikTok. I think it's such a massively, uh, creative, entertaining, uh, participatory platform that it's going to, Dest- it's gonna it could it ha- could be a threat to other platforms you know what, my, my opinion on tiktok right i think why i personally like, i don't like i don't really get get involved in the app i don't really watch it but why i think why i think it's good is it takes away all the rules of everything like instagram there's rules like you need to like post a certain picture you get a certain amount of likes and you, need, you need to do, you need to look a certain way whereas like it didn't used to be like that and tiktok's come along and been like yeah we want to see you do like do whatever you want to do like there's no rules here. Like you, ha- you can do whatever you like. You, know, you haven't got to look cool to be cool. Do you know what I mean? That's why. What, what I personally think is, you can do whatever. Like if Instagram feels it's too closed off, and you'd like you have normal people, and you have like influencers over here, and it's like that's it. There's, there's no middle ground. Whereas TikTok, it's just mm. they've opened the doors and they're like everyone's involved. You can anyone can do anything, and I think that's what's nice. The f- well, the thing with TikTok is they've it's so much fun for people to participate in like like what you said earlier you said people just do the same things and it's like yeah you can go on there and you can choose one of the little dance routines or one of the things that everyone does and you can get all your friends involved and it's just fun to do that regardless of how many likes you get or or how many followers you've got you you can have so much fun with your family or your friends just filming a little routine and and that's great you're participating in in on instagram it's much more individual you're on there on your own posting your own yeah. stuff you're not you're not asking other people to get involved and help you with it also it, it there's you know there's creators that just do the stuff that everyone else does copy it that's fine there's also some really creative people and some really funny yeah. people um, but also, how the hell have TikTok managed to get all the, all that music? Like, you can yeah. find the, yeah. your favorite song. That's true. You can find your favorite song and put a workout video to it, and and use your favorite song like fifteen seconds. I was like, wait, how? Like YouTube, if you use any popular YouTube, song or YouTube artist, if you sing the song. They like, give you a copyright. <laughs> exactly. Like, how have TikTok done this? I I know some of them are covers on there, but that's incredible i think this might be my conspiracy tim foil hat coming on for a second here but i really i really feel like because it, am i am i right in saying it's a chinese made yes. app i think facebook obviously they're going to do the their at some point they're going to do their tiktok and then somehow this is the conspiracy theorist this is me i've not heard this anywhere else but i think Facebook are then going to, or some sort of regulation is going to come in in the West where TikTok gets pushed out because, and then, and then we got, we have our Western version of TikTok and it's made by Facebook. If that happens in the next year, you thank me. Yeah, you heard that from me first. And remember that I said that. Okay, yeah, fine, man. <laughs> no, but yeah, you should get TikTok. It's fun. Yeah, well, I, I've, I've got it, but I just don't really get super involved with it. That's all. Like, I, like, I just, too. I haven't really got, like, I try and use my time productively, like not saying it's not productive, but I feel like if I'm going to spend hours on TikTok, I'd spend like 25, 30 minutes on TikTok, I could spend that doing a workout or reading. Like, but that, that's, just, or, that's, just, that's just what benefits me as a person rather than... Or, watch, or watching props for... Yeah, I mean, they get me hyped on writing, man. I'm going to watch Ian Morris send around in fucking baggy jeans. <laughs> <laughs> You're insane. But yeah, no, I just... What what book are you reading at the moment? Um, I've actually got a load on the go. I think I've got one that's called Love Me, Don't Leave Me, which is about building <laughs> um, emotional, lasting relationships. Um, what else have I got? I've got... I've got one... I've actually, I've got one on order. I ordered one uh, yesterday as well, which I'm excited to get. Um, it's... Um, tall, tall order? No, it's actually... Um, it's called Start Your Engines. It's Sam Briggs. Um, she's a British... Um, CrossFit athlete, and she's just an absolute animal. She wrote a book, and she's a pretty incredible athlete. So I just I ordered that because she's sick. So I'm excited. I'm That's excited great. to read that because she's literally like one of. She uh, I think it was a 2018 Dubai Championship. She won. And she wasn't even like she's um like in CrossFit you have like uh elites and then like masters. When you're over 35, you become a master. And she's like 
she's right. like 36 and she's like still competes with like the elite level athletes and she's supposed to be like a master so she's sick wow she's an animal so yeah the books will be sick i'm looking forward to it that's sick um what are you reading that's funny because i i was reading um i think it's called rebel ideas matthew syed love bit of syed but it's like really interesting because it's all about how diverse ideas can help a company out or you know any kind of organization but uh, the thing i thought it was interesting is it talks about um how a group is smarter than an individual obviously you know like for example and elon Musk even talks about that in his joe rogan podcast he says that obviously one person is not going to figure out how to get to the moon or space or mars you know but a, a corporation with loads of different minds on that is is an intelligent yeah. group and can figure that out and that's so interesting to me and it's like and this is what diverse ideas are all about is say for example you're going to start a bmx bike company i used to i i would have thought back in the day that you you would the ideal situations that you use sort of five um guys that know a lot about bmx but in actual fact that's actually detrimental you're better off using um for example uh the fa which is the football association appointed a diverse group of people um as a think tank to find out i think they wanted advice on uh the, the english football yeah. team so instead of instead of getting i would have thought they would have got in ex-players and managers and people that work in the game they brought in one football player and then i think it was like nine other people that had new, that had nothing to do with football a writer yeah. um a scientist and all these different people because what hap- what happens when you get sort of a few people that know if, if they had got 10 footballers in there they all, one of them already knows sort of everything there is to know about football. Is, and so and so what happens is when you have nine people that all know the same subject, they're not really help, they're not they're helping each other. Mind. They all know yeah, the same. Mind. Yeah. Like, yeah, you, you give someone to make, then they can think outside the box because otherwise the ex-player is going to think like a football player. Whereas if you've got a writer, they'll be like, oh, have you thought about that? And they're like, no, I've actually never thought about that because I've always been taught that this is how it is. Like, and you're, yeah. even if you don't think you're blocked off, you're blocked off until it's sort of like different it's different ways help to think about different things yeah you don't it's like you it's like if you're so involved in bmx you only see this way and you never even thought to even look that way like, like, and it's, it's it's until it's until someone that's from a totally different profession points something out and it's it's often like almost so obvious but you're like whoa no i haven't actually thought this of is, that. This is like, why like beginner's luck i personally think it's a thing right so like say me and you go out and you've been doing javelin for years and you're like you know you can throw 30 meters i have no idea how far i can throw and you're like yeah. oh like just throw as hard as you can see how far it can go and like, i do 35 meters because i don't know the, the limits of what like what's possible or not like so i, I don't know yeah. there's a constraint and you can't do that so i'm like oh and you're like mm. how have you done that and you're like what and you're like oh, i don't know i just chuck as hard as i could but it's because you mm. are constantly thinking that is the limit there's a fence there like i'm just i'm just trying to do that that's what i think beginner's luck and that when you bring someone in who doesn't do anything or have anything to do with anything that you do you can, it helps break things down because they're just like oh well i think i can do it because there's, yeah. no, there's no limits put in place for that person to think about yeah we, we create our own limits yeah. don't we and it's uh you know it's, it's even interesting for me when i like wilson is nearly two years old now but the way he looks at the world is even different to me. Like he's, he, he's even got diverse ideas. For example, I carry him downstairs in the morning to the kitchen and this happened the other day. Alice had bought something new on the table. I think, what was it? It was a new cup. It was on the table next to the fruit bowl and I didn't see it because I just, I'm, I may be thinking about the emails I've just read or what's going on in the day or the fact that I've got no milk for Wilson's porridge or something like that. We walk down the kitchen and Wilson sees it, you know, because he's, this is what I'm yeah. saying. He's like, he, he's looking at things differently than I am. And he's just a two-year-old. Like, that's why it's so good to get diverse ideas. And we have that at all order. We have me doing what I do and then the group that we have working on it yeah. all sort of, none. some of them don't ride, you know, and that's good for the, the way we yeah, run because things. Because if you, uh, you, yeah, you're, tra- you're trapped in the thing, you know, you've got to be a certain way. Like, I've got to be core, dude. 
yeah that's the worst thing that you can do is be trapped in a mindset and i, I i'm i'm actually going to send an email around to i was even include people like matt bowl my red bull team manager is like send an email out to a bunch of people i know that work in different professions and just just with like hey have you got any ideas of of how i could you know make tool order better or whatever you know and just 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 get that feedback because yeah. it could be interesting exactly i agree mate so yeah that's what i've been reading mate I, I might pretty good because like, i love this like a bit of side mate bit of side you can borrow it after me i i'm pretty bad at reading though like at night time i read like two pages i'm nodding off yeah you know? I, try, I try and i try and do like 10 to 20 pages a day that's like my, my um lockdown routine come on really? like if, oh, you know tell anyone to look at their screen time on that on their phone and it, i bet it'd be, it'd be horrendous now because lockdown so if you can spend 10 hours looking at your phone you can take half an hour to read 20 pages of a book that's what that, that's yeah. that's how i look at it just because i'm so easily influenced into just not doing anything that i have to structure my life and be like right you're gonna do that you're gonna do this yeah no it's, it's the best it's way beneficial. to do it if you if you not like there's only so many uh gym shark girl legging photos you can look at before you're bored of instagram so you might as well try and learn something <laughs> see what i'm saying <laughs> And there's, and there's so many tinder swipes you can do before you're like i've literally gone through the whole of dorset <laughs> oh oliver i'm glad you're hanging in there though yeah i'm keeping real Cut. i bet you've got muscles no i'm really been doing a lot of cardio recently actually shout out to cardio that's my jam i love cardio yeah, I, liked, I did what the other day i did a half marathon then a 40 mile bike ride in the same day I saw that. That's not That's going to be a rest day. That was cool. Because I ran four, mile, four miles a day after I did my 25 mile bike ride, and I was just. I, did, I enjoyed it, but. Yeah. You think, like right, an Ironman, you swim 2.4 miles, get out of that water, jump on a bike, you, run, you cycle 120 miles, you get off that bike, and then you run a marathon. Can you comprehend that? Bro, Can you comprehend that? Bro, bro, like, that is. He's insane. And these dudes are not coming off the bike and running a four and a half hour marathon. These dudes are running a three sub three hour marathon. Like I can run a three hour marathon, like just a three hour marathon, nothing else. These dudes are coming off of all that, and they are, <sighs> mate. It's the it's literally the most incredible thing you uh, like. I what I watch. Matt, Matt, Matty Kramer um, rides for us. Little tall order rider, Scotty Kramer's brother. He is gunning towards. Well, he says he's going to try an Iron Man. What do you think, Ollie? I mean, kids, I, lo- I love him to bits. He's the, happy, the happiest man I know. Like, on any trip, he will always, like, you've got food poisoning, your bike's been nicked, like, you've just been run, you've just been run <laughs> over. He will be... You're an alcoholic. Yeah, you're an alcoholic. <laughs> he'll be there, like, he will just be smiling and just try and make you feel good. But, like making yeah, eggs just, just, like, yeah. just enjoying life and you're like why are you so happy i've just been shot in the face by like a, a drug <laughs> and standing the leg of a heroin needle and he's like hey man it's a better day and you're like i love taking him on road trips he, he brings best. the absolute smiles like he, and he's my, my favorite thing is his his music taste is out of half wow <laughs> <laughs> like you give him you give oh. him control of music in the bus and it is a party <laughs> But yeah, no, an yeah. Iron Man, like, there's a reason these guys are elite athletes. Like, anyone can do an Iron Man, but I just think it's, like, I'll do a half. I, Not anyone can do an Iron Man. That's, that's a ludicrous no, no, statement. No, anyone can do an Iron Man, you, but you have to commit yourself to it. Like, anyone can do it, but you have to commit yourself to it. Like, you can't be like, I'll just, I'll think about it. You gotta be like, right, I'm, I'm doing it. I couldn't do an Ironman. I, I I would need two years you of solid devoted years. training. What do you mean? Why would you say that? I rode twenty five miles the other day and I was laying on the couch thinking I was going to throw up afterwards. I, just, I, I, I think I think <laughs> my mindset is completely different to like a lot of people's mindset when it comes to endurance events. Yeah, you you like it. You like that pain. I don't. Yeah, it comes down. It comes down to just. Where it's like your your perceived level of exertion 
and how much you're willing to put into it. You, if you're willing to just put everything out there and be like, "Here's what it is," like, can Matty Kramer do it? It depends when it is. Like, it depends. It depends when the event is. Because he he tried to run. He did his first ten mile run the other day, yeah. right? You've got a long way to go. You have. You have. Like, but the, the problem is, I think you need to just carry on building and you can't let off the gas. Like if, you're, if you're starting to build, you need to start putting your body through how much work can it, how, how much, how big is your work capacity? Like you need to be like, right, so I'll do 10 miles, I'm going straight to the pool. Then I'm straight, I'm do, you need to do everything every day. Like, well not every day, but you need to be, you need to be up in your work capacity. Your body needs to know what it's like to feel stressed because your body is going to yeah. be stressed. So you, otherwise, otherwise your training's futile if you're not going to actually you, it's, it's full like on you from now like, on for him. He needs I would, to. Personally, I'd be like, I'd be hitting forty miles on the bike. I'll get off the bike and I would hit like either a tempo run or ten miles. Like, yeah, you like you need yeah. to, the capacity of work. Your body needs to be at, like your body has to take out. You have to you have to give one hundred and twenty miles on just the bike. <sighs> so, you think about that and a marathon and a you two point four you mile swim. People, people out there, they're like, I'm going to run a marathon. And they dedicate like six to eight months for it, for just a third, a third of that race. Dude, me and Matty swam in the sea near my house from one groin to the other. Probably what? Maybe a hundred meters. It was tough. We both thought it was tough. It, it it was hard because it was you know there was it was a sea and it was yeah, currents you, and stuff. I think no, I'll, no. To be fair, we went there and back. It was, and we were like. Whew, that was that was yeah, a workout. You, did, you, sw- you swim in the sea at the Hawaii World Championship yeah. for the Ironman. It's two point four mile open water swim in the wow. sea. <laughs> like these these people, and I remember like they, that's where I get my motivation from. Is there it was an article from um, a Red Bull athlete. I think it's Daniela da- Daniela Rafe Rife. She's like four times world champion, and it was train for the pace you want, not the pace you have. And that sticks in my head every single time I go out to train. And it's like, why are you training? Are you training for a purpose? If you're not training for a purpose, don't do it. Mm. What, what, what do you mean, don't do it? Don't do the, like if it, the training if or you, the goal? If you've got a goal and your goal is to say, let's say, like, do an Ironman, are you going out there just to, like, just to do it? Or are you going out there to actually train? Like, you've got a goal. Mm. Don't just go in there half ass it. Train because you've got a purpose. Don't be like, like, yeah. I'm not saying that's for everyone. Because you can enjoy working out, you can enjoy training, you can just go and take part. But if you if you have yeah. a goal, don't just go out there and like put half of your like, like oh, I just tried today. But like you put your heart and soul into every single session because that's well, that's how like elite athletes are made because you have to want it. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah. I, I honestly I, think I'm scared to do an Ironman. I bet. Like. Like I would be scared. I, I know I know that if I could get past the bike, I'd be fine. Okay, so we're gonna do a, instead of the Iron Man, we're gonna do the Ollie Jones Invitational. It's gonna be called the Plasticine Man, and it's a run around a skate park, a run to the shops to get some beers, and a and water jump where you got back flipping. You've into got the a, sea. you got a neck and at least a minimum eight percent tinny before you flip into the sea. <laughs> Uh, pass <laughs> let you do that one Ollie. Uh, yeah guys this is really fun let's get drunk as well no Ollie. i mean drinking is fun until he goes overboard there's yeah. no fun oh shout out to having a burger and a pint when this is yeah, all over i'm gonna i'm gonna grab a burger i think i'm gonna eat a bagel now so hey come 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 this way soon because i think the lockdown's relaxed now yeah it, like kind if of. we're allowed to hang out i'm gonna come down we can do a face-to-face podcast in the se- in the uh in the studs I'll get the beers in. That will be sick. Podcast and Sounds beers. Sounds good to me. Okay, well, I'll say thanks to the list. Thanks to everyone for listening. And um, yeah, leave us some feedback and subscribe and yeah. all that. Thanks also, go over to iTunes and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and give us a review on iTunes because we want a cool podcast on iTunes. Yeah, and this is small and we only do it for fun. We do it for you guys. Cool. Thanks a lot, Thank everyone. Thank you. Peace, peace, peace out. Peace.